Hello everybody, we're here at day two of Money 2020 Europe and I'm here with Ida Coretti and David Birch. How are you both? Great. Great, thank yeah. you. So you're enjoying your time at Money 2020 so far? Yeah, ah, it's fantastic. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it was, uh, it's day two, it's still early days. We've, got, uh, we've still got tomorrow to, uh, to meet everybody and tie up some loose ends. So before we get into it, do you want to tell our audience a bit about who you are and which companies come from? Sure, I'm here as the non-executive chairman of Digisec. Ido is, well, you can say. Yeah, I'm here. I'm a director at Digisec, uh, representing Artec Holdings, who is the investor at Digisec. Brilliant. So, so why don't you tell me a bit about who Digisec is and, and what is the company's vision? Digisec is uh, objects as a service. And what that means is by taking, uh, I mean, I mean literally objects, I mean, it could be any, key rings, footballs, shirts, it doesn't matter what, vases, anything. By putting a secure microchip in those things, I mean really secure microchip, like as secure as the chip that's in your bank card or your SIM, you can give those things an identity. And once things have an identity, they can become the basis of a service. Obviously those services will be different things depending on the entities. It could be like if it's a football shirt, it's like is this a real football shirt? Was this really worn by you know, Harry Kane scoring the penalty against England. If it's a, you know, if it's a key ring, it could be, is this a real uh, EMV card? Can I really pay with it? You know, whatever. So the point is, putting chips in things is interesting, but putting secure chips in that you can depend on means objects have an identity. And once they have an identity, they can become the basis of a service. And that's what we do. Mm. So what is, what is your future vision for, for the company? I mean, our vision really is about choice, isn't it? So it, it, it's about giving people the choice about which objects they want. I'll give you a very simple example, right? So if you think about payments, payments is an easy example. You know, when I'm in London, I have the, the ring. So when I'm in London, like I have the ring and I use it to get on the tube and the bus and I don't really think about it and it works fine for me. You know, my wife prefers the key ring because when she runs into the store, she always has her keys in her hand. Other people like the bracelets or wristbands. Or It's about giving people the choice in those things. And of course, those are things that have to work properly. They can't be hacked. They can't be tampered with. They've got to work properly all the time. And, and we're good at that stuff. So what does the wearables tech market currently look like? It's in, a, it's in an interesting transition because it kind of used to be about the functionality mm -hmm. Like it used to be about these kind of silicon wristbands that you would have at pop festivals or you know whatever with simple chips in. Um, but it's becoming kind of more of a fashion thing. So a lot of the reason why people want the, the bracelets or the rings or the key ring, you know, like with the football clubs and yeah. things like that. Like people want the key ring that has the football club crest on. And you know, you walk into a store and you pay with your iPhone, you're not demonstrating any branding or loyalty. It's not the same thing as you walk in and you pay with your bracelet or your key ring or something like that. So it's making this transition, like the functionality is there. Now it's becoming more about fashion and brand and statements, you know. And you've just uh, been, uh, received an investment. So, so who made the investment and why did they make it? Um, so the investment was made by Artec Holdings. Um, Digisec is an uh, Artec uh, supplier for a few years already. We know the people, we know the product. And once they came out with the um, revolutionary provisioning uh, system called Arcos, we recognized that it's something that is a game changer in the provisioning world. And seeing that, we uh, saw a very high potential. And therefore, we decided to uh, invest and to and bring Digisec to the next level. Mm. And, and, wh and why do you think that they, they wanted to invest in that? Uh, I believe that the um, idea of uh, investing in a, in a game changer at the provisioning, it's not only payment, as they've just, just said, it's the combination of services into an object. And we believe that this is something that in the early future is going to boom out and, and just be a very... Uh, and you have to understand that in the old days, like, <clears throat> like let's say I was going to put a, I was going to put your bank card. I mean, we use that keyring example; it's an easy example. So somewhere in the factory, like your card details or some card details have got to be loaded into the chip. The chip's got to get into the keyring. You've got to get the keyring to the right person. What we can do, and this is the, Lido refers to as the game changer, is we can load those chips through phones, tablets. So if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, we have that. You can pick up the keyring and then load the card into it yourself. And this 
remote personalization of chips is, a, is absolutely new. The idea of being able to just pick something off the shelf and then personalize it and turning it into your thing. And, and again, I stress with real security, not by gluing a barcode to it or something. Um, you know, this, this takes into a whole new area. Um, what, what's this uh, investment going to be used for? Um, there is two, two main elements that we see uh, the investment going for. Number one is to um, improve the technology, uh, improve the uh, user experience, uh, improve the uh, technicality behind uh, Arcos and, and to take it to the next level as well. And um, the second is um, mainly to uh, expand the enabling uh, banks, issuers, uh, brands into the system. So it's become like a provisioning hub and we see whoever is in the marketplace just to join that hub and, and yeah, you see, I mean, enjoy we don't, those services. Yeah. We, we don't make the watches or the, I mean, exactly. it's partners who make those things and deliver to them. So, so we want to be the hub that brings together the people that have all the cool devices and the chips and the banks and the services that people want to add to it. You know, we'll, we'll be the hub for all of that. Brilliant. And, and my final question to you is, what, what are you looking to get out of Money 2020 Europe this year? I mean, I'm, you know, like any of the other, we're, we're here to meet new customers. And the truth is, I mean, they've done a fantastic job getting the exhibition on in you know, all of the circumstances, but it's had a really good atmosphere. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the kind of, you know, people are happy walking around, <laughs> like partly because it's just nice to be out talking to people again, but it's had a good atmosphere and, and we've met some new partners, which was very important to us. Interesting. And I also believe that uh, what I feel in the, in the first two days, that the quality of the attendance are, are very high. So. It might not be super uh, uh, busy or you, you have like thousands of people coming in, but the people that do come in are very, very potential and, and high quality. I mean, we have quality meetings here. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad to hear that you're both enjoying your time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one more day left. So uh, yes, thank you very much, guys. Talk thank soon. You. <laughs> thank you so much.